Hi, welcome to the second video on mechanics of forecasting methods. This is a series of five videos. The first one was on moving average. This second video is on exponential smoothing. The third will be on trend lines, fourth seasonal indices, and the last one on measures of forecasting accuracy. I am Piyush to take you through this video of around eight minutes. Um, exponential smoothing is actually exactly same as the weighted moving average. Now how this works is an element of different video. Um, so everything that was applicable for weighted moving average is applicable for exponential smoothing also. And the points that we raised last time that exponential smoothing just like the moving averages is suitable only for data with random variations. If there are trends or seasonality in the data there are other better methods available and typically this is only used for short term forecasting. Let's jump into the data. And this is the same data that we had last time, uh, 20 data points uh, which are varying randomly around 135. Um, I made the y-axis start at 120 so that we get a better visualization of the graph. Um, we start, the alpha is a smoothing factor which we require. If you look at the screen here on the top left, there is a something called as alpha. The alpha can vary between 0 and 1, the minimum is 0, the maximum is 1. We need this alpha to help us uh, uh, forecast using the exponential smoothing method. And the formula is this one here. The forecast of the second period is equal to forecast of the first period plus alpha multiplied by the actual of the first period minus the forecast of the first period. This is the error term. So I'll repeat. The forecast of the second period is equal to the forecast of the first period plus alpha multiplied by the previous error. So the forecast of May would be forecast of April plus alpha uh, multiplied by the actual minus forecast of April, which is the error in April. Uh, like we said, alpha can vary between 0 and 1. We'll try to use various values of alpha and understand the behavior. Let's start with a uh, value of alpha as um, 0 0.3. Uh, no reason for taking this, um, just a random number, trial 1. Mm -hmm. We need a value to help us start because if you look at the formula, that's actual minus forecast. Uh, I will use the average of all the demand numbers given as the first period forecast to help me start. Um, is, this, is this how it has to be done? No. Some people take the first period demand as, uh, so this some people will take this as 134. It can also be taken as the average of some four, five, six values. If you use the same concept over a period of time, it does not matter how you start. So let's look at the formula here. Forecast of the second period is equal to the forecast of the first period plus alpha multiplied by bracket open actual minus forecast. Bracket closed. Enter. We get 135.05. Let's understand this first calculation here. It was the actual um, is 134 and forecast is 135. So what happens is the forecast of the second period is equal to forecast of the first period, which is 135.5 plus alpha, which is 0 0.3, multiplied by the error, which comes out to be negative 1.5. Multiply this by 0 0.3 and we get negative 0 0.45. Uh, when we subtract 0 0.45 from 135.5, we get 135.05, what we have here. We fix up the cell for the smoothing, the row C$2, um, so that the smoothing factor is fixed. And after that, I can double click here to get all the forecast values um, for the 20 periods. Uh, if I click on the graph and extend this, wait for the arrow to come and extend, what we see is that the forecast is relatively smooth as compared to the actual demand which has higher variation. So there's a smoothing taking place. Let's look at alpha as um, 0 0.8 to understand. This is the trial 2 to understand how this works. In this case, it would um, we start with the average uh, of the entire period as our starting point. Mm, and then say same number is equal to previous forecast plus alpha multiplied by bracket open actual minus forecast which is the error and say enter 
and um, we fix up the smoothing factor and then double click so that we get the values now let me include this forecast with alpha 0 0.8 the green line what you see in the green line is that it's more sensitive it's varying the variation is more than the blue line so as alpha has increased the ability to smoothen out the demand goes down let's understand this with two extreme values trial 3 we will uh, do it with alpha as 0 which is the lowest value possible equal to average of uh, the existing demand values we will follow the same pattern that we have done and then this period is equal to previous forecast plus alpha multiplied by bracket open actual minus forecast which is again the error um, we fix up the smoothing factor like we have always done and double click it now what you get here is that every period is exactly same okay so it's completely insensitive the first period forecast is the second period forecast is the third period forecast irrespective of the actual demand now let's go to trial 4 uh, where we take alpha as the other extreme that is 1 we start with the average um, of the all the demand this is how we have always done it um, so this is the first period um, this equals the previous forecast plus alpha multiplied by bracket open actual minus forecast bracket closed enter let me fix up the smoothing factor dollar and uh, double click this all right now look at this extreme uh, this was the first period actual demand was 134 the second period forecast is 134 the first second period actual is 143 third period forecast is 143 the third period actual demand was 144 the fourth period demand is also 144. Now, this is what we call as naive forecasting, which is a highly sensitive forecast where the previous period's actual becomes the next period's forecast. So, what we have here when alpha was zero, it was a very insensitive method. Um, the forecast did not change at all, like you can see on the trial three. And when alpha is one, it's a highly sensitive forecasting method like naive forecasting where the previous period's actual becomes the current period's forecast. We use this and some other considerations in helping us decide the value of alpha that we will use to forecast. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please do like this video on YouTube. Thank you.